There we go. You gonna get the memo? I did. There we go. Just clicked it. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Today's class will be on Imperial Guard. And Imperial Guard is basically just um, doing guard duty and all that. Uh, if you see, if you go on base, the guys in the front checking IDs, you know, those are, that's Imperial Guard in a way. Uh, let's see. Uh, duties of the Imperial Guard. So, like I said, Imperial Guard is basically, um, uh, well, it says here any commander may establish an interior guard to preserve order. So you can be in the field and your commander can basically say, all right, I want um, I want squad to post security. That's technically interior guard. And then it says types of guards. You have um, a normal, a normal interior guard where it's a rifle, or not even a rifle, a pistol, just walking around, or it can go from that to a riot duty if anything is going down. And there's there's two types of orders for interior for interior guard. This one is probably um, if you're going to OCS, this is probably the most important one that you need to pay attention to because this is your general orders. Um, and there's eleven of them. Before you go to OCS, memorize your general orders. I don't know if the captain is gonna do uh, the same thing that they did to us when we shipped, and it was basically um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, we had to go in front of a board at the RS in front of um, I think it was Major Driscoll or. No, it wasn't Major Driscoll. It was another captain, the sergeant major there, and then the master sergeant. We did the um, lineup, and then they asked us questions, uh, and then they asked us some questions about the general orders. And they'd be like, um, "What's your fifth general order?" or whatever. Um, so definitely memorize that. I don't know if they'll do that this year because of what's going on, but. Even then, you still have to memorize this uh, before uh, at OCS. So um, memorize it now because it's really it's it's pretty easy to memorize. Uh, once you memorize it uh, here, it'll, it'll be you have one less thing to worry about at OCS. So definitely general orders. Pay attention to that. And then you have just special orders. Um, that one uh, depends on your um, commander, command, whoever's in charge. Um, it's up to him or her what that special order is. And then deadly force. Um, it's pretty explanatory. It says force which a person uses causing or that he knows or should reasonably know would create a substantial risk of causing death or serious bodily harm. When to apply deadly force. Um, I'm not going to read them all. Self-defense and defense of others. And then it's a property involving national security. Assets not involving national security, but inherently dangerous to others. Serious offenses against persons, protect public health or safety, arrest or apprehension or escape. Um, it's pretty common sense on um, when you should use deadly force. But there's obviously um, some guidelines, some rules, more rules that uh, you should follow. And then procedures for following, for applying deadly force. Uh, says here, if you're not uh, security, law enforcement or security, um, you cannot uh, apply deadly force unless you have training on using firearm and it says additionally, uh, annual refresher training shall be given to all personnel assigned to those duties to ensure they continue to be thoroughly familiar with all restrictions on the use of deadly force. Now, I don't know about any other branches, but no, this, number one here, Marine Corps does not do warning shots. So if you, if someone tells you, to, or if in the Marines, when they tell you to stop, and if you don't stop, they're going to shoot you. I mean, that's just the way it is, but at that point, if you don't stop, then you're probably 
trying to do something malicious. And then some other stuff that on here that's um, guidelines on when to use deadly force. But that's the most important one. Warning shots are uh, prohibited, meaning we, Marines don't use warning shots. They don't do warning shots. The guard chain of command. For this one, there's a lot. It says commanding officer, field officer, officer of the day, command of the guard, sergeant of the guard, corporal of the guard, and guard sentry. At OCS, there's only going to be three, which is sergeant of the guard, corporal of the guard, and guard sentries. And that'll explain what those are on the next slide. But usually, well, not usually, at OCS, you only have three, sergeant of the guard, corporal of the guard, guard sentry. The other ones don't really matter until you get to the fleet. But obviously, at OCS, for the candidates, it's sergeant of the guard, corporal of the guard, guard sentry, and the actual Marines at OCS. Obviously, they have commanding officer, field officer of the day, officer of the day, command, commander of the guard. And so the, uh, the billets, like I said, commander of the guard, commanding officer, field officer of the day. Uh, I'll, I'll touch on the, more, the important ones, sergeant, corporal, and then the main. So sergeant of the guard, the sergeant of the guard assists, assists the commanding of the guard in ensuring proper instruction, discipline, and performance of duty of the main guard. He performs the duties of the commander of the guard if no commander of the guard is assigned. So OCS, there is a sergeant of the guard, but unlike it says here, it says, the sergeant guard assists the commander of the guard. There's no commander of the guard for the candidates. The sergeant of the guard is, um, like I says here, he performs the duties of commander of the guard uh, if no commander of the guard is assigned. So if you are um, tasked for sergeant of the guard, it's, I, I feel sorry for you because. <laughs> Sergeant of the guard, basically what you have to do is, obviously there's shifts when you have fire watch. And what the sergeant of the guard does is he's in charge of the corporal of the guard. And I'll tell you what the corporal of the guard is later, but he's in charge of the corporal of the guard. The corporal of the guard, once fire watch starts, they have, they're on watch for two hours. So if you can imagine, if you're sergeant of the guard, and the corporal of the guard is on watch for two hours, you have to relieve them after every shift. So if you're sergeant of the guard, your sleep is broken up. You have to wake up every two hours to relieve the corporal of the guard. Like I said, which is unfortunate for you, but you should only get sergeant of the guard once. Um, I think in my platoon, <laughs> Um, we got one guy who got sergeant of the guard twice, so it was unlucky for him. I never got sergeant of the guard, but I always got corporal of the guard. Okay, so corporal of the guard. Corporal of the guard, you're in charge of the quarter deck. The quarter deck is basically in the middle of each squad bay. So you have, if you're in upper company, I was in Alpha Company. There's four squad bays. There's four platoons in Alpha Company, which means there's four squad bays. And each, if you imagine a, a square and you put um, Alpha Company, first platoon on one corner, on the left bottom corner, and then Alpha 2 will be on the top right corner, Alpha 3 will be on the top, or Alpha 1 will be on the bottom left, Alpha 2 will be in the top left, Alpha 3 will be on the top right, and alpha four will be in the bottom four of that square. In the middle is where the quarter deck is. And that's basically the office of the commanding officer of the company, the gunner sergeant of the company, the sergeant first class of the company. So if you're corporal of the guard, you always have to be on your toes because you're in the presence of the leadership there. So if you screw up, they're going to notice. So the corporal of the guard is in charge of the quarter deck. Uh, OCS. If you're a corporal of the guard, basically you have to get counts. Counts is important on OCS. So 
let's say it's time for you to relieve the first corporal of the guard. Once you relieve the corporal of the guard, you have to get your count. So you have to go to every platoon, every platoon's fire watch, because by then they should already have count. So you go to every platoon's fire watch. Okay, Alpha, Alpha 1, what's your count? Alpha 2, what's your count? Alpha 3, what's your count? Alpha 4, what's your count? You have to combine them and they should line up to how many candidates there are in that company. If not, then someone's missing and that's not good. Usually we never had any problem, but and I think you won't have a problem there. No one's gonna go AWOL or anything, so you'll be fine. But for Corporal of the Guard, all you do is count and then you just stand there for two hours um, there's certain there's certain tasks that each corporate guard does. Let's say from lights, which is lights is 2100. From from 21 to 22, the first corporate guard will do this. From 22 to 01, next corporate guard will do this. So, so you're just gonna certain tasks. You'll have certain tasks as you do corporate guard. So it's not, I'm not going to say, it's, so you won't get bored, but I mean, because you don't actually have to do it. Yeah, it's actually a job that you have to do, but it's, it gets you away from boredom, especially if you slept late and it's your turn for Corporal of the Guard. I know for me and my rack mate, you always got Corporal of the Guard. I don't know. Um, I don't know why. I guess it's just um, how we, how our rack was placed, but we got Corporal of the Guard from Zero two, or no, from like is at zero five. You from zero three to zero to zero five, I think, or zero two to zero four, which is basically the last watch. And that's when all the sergeant instructors are waking up, and they're walking in front of you, and you have to salute and say, um, say the. There's a prompt that you have to say every time they walk by. I mean, they walk by, let's say they walk by uh, every minute, you have to say it every minute. It's just the way it is. And I'll tell you what we have to say later. And then you have uh, main special, uh, main or special guard sentries. Those are basically just your regular fire watch. So for Corporal of the Guard, it's two hours for uh, special guard sentries or main guard sentries. It's basically just regular fire watch. So regular fire watch is just one hour. Every hour you wake someone up, it's your turn. And they do the same thing as the corporal of the guard, but instead of getting counts for the whole company, you get your counts for your platoon. So you help out the corporal of the guard. So you, so you, what you do is your um, your fire watch. You get your counts, and then you have to log in a logbook. They'll teach you there how to do it. At first, I, it. I thought it was complicated, but it's pretty easy. But also for us, we had a special. I don't know if any other platoons did it, but for us, laundry was continuous, meaning the fi whoever's fire watch they actually they always have to check on laundry, make sure it's going, make sure it's complete. And by the end of by by morning time, by zero four thirty, usually all the laundries were washed. So if you're worried about um, buying stuff, uh, needing stuff for like your shirts, you don't have enough. If you do laundry every night, you'll have enough because when morning comes, the laundry that you put there the day before it will already be washed. So you don't have to worry about it. So that's the, uh, the three guards that you're gonna do at OCS. Sergeant of the guard, like I said, if you get it, sorry, corporal of the guard, it's not that bad, two hours, unless you get it every time. And then you have regular fire watch, or main sentry, as it says here, but it's for OCS, it's fire watch, it's every hour. There are some days that you're not going to get fire watch. Um, I think for me, it was like a rotation. So I won't have fire watch for two days, I think. And then third day, and then the next two days, I would have fire watch, just the way it is. And it depends on your scribe. Your scribe is the one that 
records everything or the one that does uh, the Firewatch, Corporal of the Guard, and Sergeant of the Guard um, roster. And I think, I, think, I think another thing about Sergeant of the Guard, you only do Sergeant of the Guard if you're on duty, if you're duty platoon. Meaning um, for duty, duty platoon or duty company, basically it means you're slotted for, it's your turn to do specific tasks, specific jobs. So duty platoon, being duty platoon and being duty company, it just sucks just because you have more to do to the sergeant of the guard. And then once, I think when you, when you do post one, post one is basically, once Liberty starts, you get post one. And if you're duty platoon or duty company, I think it's duty company. Post one is basically the post where the civilian vehicles are at. So not only do you have a regular firewatch, corporal of the guard, and sergeant of the guard, you have post one. That's when you get radios. You go. You have post one where candidates watch over the vehicles, make sure nothing's happening. But these are the main three that you're gonna get. Oh yeah, sergeant of the guard, corporal of the guard, and uh, main or special guard sentries, which is basically just firewatch. And then the relief. This goes in order, so the sentry gets relieved. The last one to get relieved is the officer of the day. It goes by order for sergeant of the guard. So what's gonna happen is the sergeant of the guard wakes up and then waits for the next corporal of the guard. And then the, he'll walk the corporal of the guard for the next watch to, re, to relieve the current corporal of the guard. It's not gonna be fancy. The, the sergeant of the guard is just there to make sure it actually happened. And then he has to write down on the log that Let's say candidate Corp Cruz, sergeant of the guard, uh, successfully relieved so and so, and now so and so is on duty, something like that. And then for the regular fire watch, you just wake up the next rack since they're next for um, fire watch. So what typically happens is you wake them up 10, 10 minutes before your watch ends, so they have time to get ready and then it's formal relief we never did formal relief we when you only do formal relief when you're duty platoon you go outside and then you relieve the other platoon that one was formal but that's like that only happens once or twice and then the formal relief procedures blah 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 formal relief Challenging personnel. So this one is that's it. That's if you're at the gates, you know the actual watch. So what happens is you when so you see someone, you say halt. Who goes there? Uh, OCS. We never said that. So we were just making fun of it. So if every time we see someone walking by, or just our, our buddies walking by from the exchange, we'd say halt. Who goes there? It's just a joke. But we never said halt who goes there. And then it says here, advance, repeat, answer to challenge, such as officer of the day to be recognized, something like that. Oh, yes, we never did that. You get an in-depth, um, you get an in-depth class about what to actually do in these circumstances. But oh, yes, we never did that because we knew who each other were. And during, from let's say 22, 2300 to 04, no one's up and about walking because they all they're all asleep. The only ones who are up are Firewatch and Corporal of the Guard. Those are the only people who are up at, at that time. And I think those are the only people who should be up. You should be sleeping, not doing whatever. Uh, another challenging. And that, that's it for the class. But like I said, um, the one uh, I'm going to, uh, what do you call it? I'm gonna write it down here on the what to say for for uh for the what you have to say when the start instructors pass by. So it's gonna be good morning. I'm gonna write it down here. So 
So you say, good morning. And then the rank. Candidate. And then your name. Report for whatever company you're in. Good morning, blah, blah, blah. Candidate request alpha company to the team. And then you use the count. So you get the count. The count on hand is blank. The count on deck is blank. And then obviously when you have rifles, there are so-and-so blank rifles. There are There are secured more than a kind of always. I will come with the team. Count on deck, count of hand on the count of There are rank secured and locked, I think, in the armory. And then the final thing I'll say is. There is nothing unusual to report at this time. Then you save the rank again, the time of day. Good morning or good, I just put time of day. And then the rank. So it's going to be you pop a salute. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Staff Sergeant. Candidate Port Pool is for Alpha Company to a platoon. The count on hand is blah, blah, blah. The count on deck is blah, blah, blah. There are 64 and 16 for Star Force, all secured and locked in the armory. There is nothing usual for this time. Good morning, or good evening, good afternoon, good, uh, good evening, Staff Sergeant. So the count on hand. Is how many you um, how many you have currently? The count on deck is how many total you have. So let's say someone someone's in um, someone's in sick bay. So your count of, on hand, let's say your count on deck is sixty four, and you have five in a sick phase. So your count on hand will be 59, but your count on deck will be 65 because they're, they're still on deck. And basically on deck means they're still at OTS. Once they leave OTS, meaning let's say they got dropped. When they get dropped and they're not in your, um, they're not in your squad bay anymore, but they're still, they're still at OTS, your count on deck is still gonna be 64. Until that person leaves OTS, it always be it always be the same number, and then I say like he see he leaves OTS, you count on deck changes to sixty three, and that'll be permanent until another one gets dropped and another one leaves. So your count on deck will never change, unless someone leaves OTS, gets dropped, injured, goes home. Basically, the only thing that changes your count on hand. Let's say you're doing counts for after Chow, and you have five. Restricted to squad bay because they got hurt. Your count on hand will be 69. And then your count on deck will be 64. They're not with you currently, but they're in OCS. And they're at the, the squad bay recovering from whatever they have. So that's, that's basically 
what you, I think I got some things wrong, but that's basically what you say. Good morning, rank candidate Kofu's first Honor Cup in 30, 32. The count on hand is blah, blah, blah. The count on thing. There are 18, M16, A4 service shots, security and locks, and armory. There's nothing else to put time. Good morning, Samson. And you're saying it pretty fast. Uh, you're not, because what they do is they walk by and then you're saying it fast. And then if they get annoyed, they'll just say, shut up, just shut up, shut up. And then you say, I, I, staff sergeant, I, grand sergeant. But if you, it, that's when you know, what, that's when they know, you know, when to say, if they don't know, they'll just stand there and wait for you to finish saying this, um, saying this, whatever, this order or this report, basically reporting. So every time they walk by, especially from 2100 to 2300, the start instructors and their company, your platoon com commander is still awake. They're pay doing paperwork, you know, they're writing chits, they're writing whatever they have to do to finish. They're doing paperwork. They're walking in and out of the duty hut. You know, if you're, if you're fire watch, you, your, um, your, your station is going to be in front of the duty hut and they're going to walk by every time. And you have every time, let's say one staff sergeant walks by and then decides to come back. You have to say it again. Just because. And then for Corporal of the Guard, since you're in the quarter deck, you're gonna have, you're gonna be saying it to the company gunner sergeant, company first sergeant, if they're there. But usually you're gonna say it to any all of the staff that's gonna walk by. So memorize again. I, I'm not pretty sure if this is correct. Uh, I don't have my candidate regs with me, but. The next time I'll have, I'll, I'll get the actual one. But other than that, class is done. If you have any questions, please feel free to answer, uh, ask. Any questions? And then uh, if you check the chat, the WhatsApp next, if you if you haven't done if you haven't what do you call it if you go to OCS it's it can be all to everyone but this is specifically to guys who are shipping next class will be will be having will be a Q and A on OCS so you better have uh, make sure you have questions lined up like I said again it doesn't, it doesn't have to be shippers it can be anyone but make sure you have questions and i'm pretty sure we're gonna have answers as well but other than that i am done talking any questions no questions all righty then hey martinez you can you can uh what do you call it you can stop recording. Okay. Uh, right on, man. Yeah. Thank hey, you. We're doing we're doing Q and A next week then Tuesday. Yes, Tuesday or Thursday. I don't care. I think we okay. should do a Q and A, maybe a weapons class and a close order drill. Okay. So what I was because I was I was thinking the same thing the Q and A. So we'll probably have, let's have let's have a Q and A next week, and then before they ship, let's have another Q and A. Just, if if we do a Q&A &A now and we give them, like, ideas for what gear to bring, they have yeah. time to get it. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And then we'll have another – we'll have a final Q&A before they leave. 